Section 11 of Toto's Merry Winter by Laura E. Richards. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Chapter 10 The Moon Calf. When Toto came home, as he did just when night was closing in around the little cottage, he was whistling merrily as usual, and the first sound of his clear and tuneful whistle brought Coon, Cracker, and Miss Mary all running to the door to greet, to tell, and to warn him. The boy listened wide-eyed to the story of the attempted robbery, and at the end of it he drew a long breath of relief. "'I am so glad you didn't let Granny know,' he cried. "'That was clever of you. "'She never would have slept quietly again. "'And I say, what a good fellow you are, Coon. "'Shake paws, old boy. "'And Miss Mary, you are a trump. "'I would give you a golden nose-ring like your princess's "'if you had a nose to wear it on. "'To think of you two defending the castle "'and putting the enemy to flight, horse, foot, and dragoons.' "'What is dragoons?' asked the parrot gravely. "'I didn't think he had any about him, unless it was concealed. "'He had no horse either, but he had two feet, and very ugly ones they were. "'He danced on them when the kettle poured hot water over his legs. "'Danced higher than ever you did, Toto.' "'Did he?' laughed Toto, who was in high spirits. "'Ha-ha! I am glad to hear it. "'But,' he added, it is so dark that you do not see our guest whom I have brought home for a little visit. Where are you, Jim Crow? Come here and be introduced to the family. Thus adjured, the crow hopped solemnly forward, and made his best bow to the three inmates, who in turn saluted him, each after his or her fashion. The raccoon was gracious and condescending, the squirrel familiar and friendly, the parrot frigidly polite though inwardly resenting that a crow should be presented to her, to her, the favorite attendant of the late lamented princess of Central Africa, without her permission having been asked first. As for the crow, he stood on one leg and blinked at them all in a manner which meant a great deal or nothing at all, just as you chose to take it. "'Distinguished persons,' he said gravely, "'it is with pleasure that I make your acquaintance.' may this day be the least happy of your lives lady parrot he said addressing himself particularly to miss mary grant me the honour of leading you within the evening air is chill for one so delicate and fragile miss mary highly delighted at being addressed by such a stately title as lady parrot relaxed at once the severity of her mien and gracefully sidled into the house in company with the sable-clad stranger while toto and the two others followed much amused after a hearty supper in the course of which toto related as much of his and bruin's adventures in the hermit's caves as he thought proper the whole family gathered around the blazing hearth toto brought the pan of apples and the dish of nuts the grandmother took up her knitting and said with a smile and who will tell us a story this evening we have had none for two evenings now and it is high time that we heard something new. Cracker, my dear, is it not your turn? Uh, I think it is, said the squirrel, hastily cramming a couple of very large nuts into his cheek pouches. And if you like, I will tell you a story that Mrs. Cow told me a day or two ago. It's about a cow that jumped over the moon. What? cried Toto. Why, I've known that story ever since I was a baby, and it isn't a story either, it's a rhyme. "'Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow—' "'Yes, yes, I know, Toto,' interrupted the squirrel. "'She told me that, too, and said it was a pack of lies, "'and that people like you didn't know anything about the real truth of the matter. "'So now, if you will just listen to me, I will tell you how it really happened.' "'The Moon Calf "'There was once a young cow, and she had a calf. "'And that's half,' said Toto, in a rather provoking manner. "'No, it isn't. It's only the beginning,' said the little squirrel indignantly. "'And if you would rather tell the story yourself, Toto, you are welcome to do so.' "'Beg pardon. Cracky,' said Toto apologetically. "'Won't do so again, Cracky. Go on, that's a dear.' And the squirrel, who never bore malice for more than two minutes, put his little huff away and continued. "'This young cow, you see, she was very fond of her calf, 
very fond indeed she was and when they took it away from her she was very unhappy and went about roaring all day long cows don't roar said toto the irrepressible they low there's a piece of poetry about it that i learned once the lowing herd do something or another i don't remember what the lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee quoted the grandmother softly what do they wind asked the raccoon yarn or a chain pump like that one in the yard or what i don't know what you mean by low toto said the squirrel without noticing coon's remarks your cow roared so loud the other day that i fell off her horn into the hay i don't see anything low in that why cracker don't you understand cried toto they low when they moo i don't mean that they moo low but the moo is low don't you see no i do not see replied the squirrel stoutly and i don't see there is anything to see i don't so there now at this point madam interfered and with a few gentle words made the matter clear and smoothed the ruffled feathers or rather fur the raccoon who had been listening with ears pricked up and keen eyes glancing from one to the other of the disputants now murmured ah yes very explicit quite what i should have said myself and relapsed into his former attitude of graceful and dignified ease the squirrel repeated to himself moo low low moo moo several times shook his head refreshed himself with a nut and finally at the general request continued his story so as i said this young cow was very sad and she lewed i, I mean mowed all day to express her grief and she thought if i could only know where my calf is it would not be quite so dreadfully bad but they would not tell me where they were taking him though i asked them politely in seven different tones which is more than any other cow here can use now when she was thinking these thoughts it chanced that the maid came to milk the cows and with the maid came a young man who was talking very earnestly to her what is it molly says he don't thee know me well enough i knows a moon calf when i sees him says the maid and with that she boxed his ears and sat down to milk the cow and he went away in a huff but the cow heard what the maid said and began to wonder what moon calves were and whether they were anything like her calf presently when the maid had gone away with the pail of milk she said to the oldest ox who happened to be standing near old ox pray tell me what is a moon calf the oldest ox did not know anything about moon calves but he had no idea of betraying his ignorance to anybody much less to a very young cow so he answered promptly it's a calf that lives in the moon of course is it are they like other calves inquired the cow timidly or a different sort of animal when a creature is called a calf replied the ox severely it is a calf if it were a cat a hyena or a toad with three tails it would be called by its own name now do you understand then he shut his eyes and pretended to sleep for he did not like to answer questions on matters of which he knew nothing it fatigued his brain and oxen should always avoid fatigue of the brain but the young cow had one more question to ask and could not rest till it was answered so mustering all her courage she said desperately oh old ox before you go to sleep please please tell me if people ever take calves to the moon from here frequently said the oldest ox i wish you were there now i am asleep good night to you and in a few minutes he really was asleep but the young cow stood still thinking she thought so hard that when the farmer's boy came to drive the cattle into the barn she hardly saw where she was going but stumbled first against the door and then against the wall and finally walked into old brindle's stall instead of her own and got well prodded by the latter's horns in consequence this cow is sick said the farmer's boy i must give her a warm mash and cut an inch or two off her tail to-morrow next day the cows were driven out into the pasture for the weather was warm and they found it a pleasant change from the barnyard they cropped the honey clover 
well seasoned with buttercups, and with just enough dandelions scattered about to give it character, as Mother Brindle said. They stood knee-deep in the cool, clear stream, which flowed under the willows, and lay down in the shade of the great oak tree, and altogether were as happy as cows can possibly be. All but the young red cow. She cared nothing for any of the pleasures which she had once enjoyed so keenly. She only walked up and down, up and down, thinking of her lost calf, and looking for the moon, for she had fully made up her mind by this time that her darling bossy had been taken to the moon, and had become a moon calf, and she was wondering whether she might not see or hear something of him when the moon rose. The day passed, and when the evening was still all rosy in the west, a great globe of shining silver rose up in the east. It was the full moon, coming to take the place of the sun, who had put on his nightcap and gone to bed. The young cow ran towards it, stretching out her neck and calling, Bossy! Moo! Moo! Bossy! Are you there? Then she listened, and thought she heard a distant voice which said, There! I knew it! she cried frantically. I knew it! Bossy is now a moon calf. Something must be done about it at once, if I only knew what. And she ran to Mother Brindle, who was standing by the fence, talking to the neighbor's black cow, her with the spotted nose. Mother Brindle, she cried, have you ever had a calf taken to the moon? My calf, my bossy, is there, and is now a moon calf. Oh, tell me, oh, tell me how to get at him, I beseech you. "'What nonsense is this?' said Mother Brindle severely. "'Compose yourself. You are excited, and will injure your milk, and that would reflect upon the whole herd. As for your calf, why should you be better off than other people? I have lost ten calves, the finest that ever were seen, and I never made half such a fuss about them as you make over this puny little red creature.' "'But he is there, in the moon,' cried the poor cow. I must find him and get him down. I must, do you hear? Decidedly, your wits must be in the moon, my dear, said the neighbor's black cow, not unkindly. They certainly have left you. Who ever heard of calves in the moon? Not I, for one, and I am not more ignorant than others, perhaps. The red cow was about to reply, when suddenly across the meadow came ringing the farm boy's call. Go, boss! Go, boss! Go, boss. Ah, said Mother Brindle, can it really be milking time? What a pleasant day this has been. Good evening to you, neighbor. And you, child, she added, turning to the red cow, come straight home with me. I heard James promise you a warm mash, and that will be the best thing for you. But at these words the young cow started, and with a wild bellow ran to the farthest end of the pasture. Bossy, she cried, staring wildly up at the silver globe, which was rising steadily higher and higher in the sky. You are going away from me. Jump down from the moon and come to your mother. Bossy, Bossy, come! And then a distant voice, floating softly down through the air, answered, Come, come! He calls me, cried the red cow. My darling calls me, and I go. I will go to the moon. I will be a moon cow. Bossy, bossy, I come. She ran forward like an antelope, gave a sudden leap into the air, and went up, 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 over the haystacks, over the trees, over the clouds, up among the stars. But alas, in her frantic desire to reach the moon, she overshot the mark, jumped clear over it, and went down on the other side, nobody knows where, and she never was seen or heard of again. And Mother Brindle, when she saw what had happened, ran straight home and gobbled up the warm mash before any of the other cows could get there, and ate so fast that she made herself ill. That is the whole story, said the squirrel seriously, and it seemed to me a very curious one, I confess. Very, said Toto dryly. But there's nothing about the others in it, the cat and fiddle and the little dog, you know. Well, they weren't in it, really, at all, replied Cracker. They were all lies, Mrs. Cow says, every one of them. Mph, said Toto. Well, 
Mrs. Cow ought to be a good judge of lies, I should say. What can be expected, said the raccoon loftily, from a creature who eats hay? Be good enough to hand me those nuts, Toto, will you? The story has positively made me hungry. A thing that has not happened since dinner time, said Toto. Wonderful indeed, Coon. But I shall hand the nuts to Cracker first, for he has told us a very good story, whether it is true or not. End of section 11